Hi, Professor Dam here. I wanted to say hello and give you a tour through our course so you could see what I look like. You're going to be hearing my voice a lot in our videos. This is my at-home workspace, so this is where you can imagine me working when we are talking and learning together. I wanted to point out that I did put a copy of our schedule um, in my workspace. I recommend that you do that too. We have several weekly deadlines and I would hate for you to miss them. So maybe pasting or copy and pasting the the course schedule and taping it someplace strategic would be a good idea. Um, but now let me take you uh, through a tour of our course so I can explain a little bit about all the little pieces that go into learning stats with me. I wanted to give you a quick course tour and address some important features of the course together. Feel free to um, select the YouTube options if you'd like to speed up this tour so I go a little bit faster. I do want to point out that I am holding you responsible for all the topics that I bring up here. I'm going to give you some tips on how to be successful on certain assignments. And so if you do choose to speed up or jump ahead, please try to catch all the important elements that, that I'm going to be sharing with you today. I'll try not to make it too long of a video. You'll notice at the top of this course that there's a, a ticket number listed and don't be uh, nervous if the course that you're in doesn't say the same number. I'm just touring one particular course and every course has a different ticket number. So if you're trying to wonder what course you're in, that's represented by this ticket number here. So every course should look exactly the same uh, except for that ticket number. I want to point out up here at the top is my office hours. This sends you to a Zoom link where I will be waiting for you on Tuesdays, Thursdays, 8 to 1030. If those hours don't work for you, you can send me an email and we can set up something else. I really want to encourage you to come to my office hours. You don't even have to have a good question. I really just like talking about stats. So you can come in and just say, you know, the last week didn't work out too well and I'll take it from there. Um, I know it can be intimidating, but I want you to, to know that I enjoy talking about it. I enjoy meeting you and it's a really fun process for me. So I wouldn't feel intimidated um, to come see me. I'm a big fan of um, pictures and kind of visual representation. And so that's why I've made this landing zone have the pictures that they have. Um, however, if you are more of a fan of kind of links that you might have seen in modules in previous classes, that is also available to you. So I'll click on this real quick just to show you that all the content that are um, linked on this main landing page are also linked here in modules and you're welcome to use both. They will lead you to the same place. Um, so do use the approach that works best for you. So I'm just going to go through each of these and then point out some key elements that you need to know for the course. So the first thing I would recommend you do is go to the syllabus and orientation page. And I will let you read this on your own, but I do want to point out a couple things. Um, there are tabs across the top that kind of break down um, the elements you need to know for the course. And then you can also scroll through and hit next on the bottom um, to get to another element of the course. However, that won't, the next button won't allow you to get to these different tabs. You have to hit those yourself. And so um, check them out, read them thoroughly. Here, your syllabus, has been emailed to you, but it will also be downloadable here. I do encourage you to download the syllabus. I've had students in the past, actually multiple times, um, reach out to me and say, hey, I didn't know I was going to end up in Florida, but I'm at the University of Florida or Texas or wherever. And um, I need to have some kind of evidence that I took your stats class. They won't just take your transcript as evidence that you've passed stats. They need to have the syllabus that you use the course that or the for the particular course that you took. So it can't be a sample syllabus you get online. So and actually, it's a good idea for all of your courses to save the syllabi. Potentially, uh, if you this happens to you where you go to another state, you need to prove that the rigor of the course and the content of the course matches what they want. So please download your syllabus and save it forever um, in some kind of Google file or something so that you can use it to justify that you've already taken this class. You don't need to take it again. It meets your needs. Now, if you're going to a CSU or UC, you should be fine. But, um, you know, you never know when you might end up out of state or you might end up someplace where that we don't maybe have an articulation agreement and it would be good to have this saved. So in this document, I uh, sorry, in this tab, I have what we'll cover. And then I also talk about how we'll run the course. And actually, I can just open that now. I do encourage you again to look at this at another time because it really does describe all of the pieces of 
the assignments that we have and it goes into more detail than I will um, today. I also give a brief tour of the website just kind of telling you what the different links will send you to in case you're confused as to what each piece is. I have policies listed here. You're going to need a webcam and a microphone for this class. So if that's something that you don't have access to right now, reach out to me. We have lots of laptops at the computer, uh, the Saddleback College to loan out. So that could be something we can help you out with. Please reach out to me soon so that we're not waiting to the last minute. You'll need um, a computer for this class, but you could probably be using an iPad or something before the test, but the test will require that you have a webcam and a microphone. Um, a simple calculator is all that need, is needed. The most complicated um, function I'll need you to use is the square root function. So I actually encourage students to use more simple calculators than the more complicated graphing calculators. I find that calculators can be tricky and they sometimes give us the wrong answers because they expected a different order. And I, I think that's disappointing. So if you can have a simple calculator available, that's great. On the test, you cannot use your cell phone as a calculator, so make sure you have something available to you. I also have some other policies in here that I encourage you to check out. One of the things I do say is I prefer to have you email me from within Canvas because then it stamps the course number that you're in on your email. So I know exactly what class you're in. I can go right into that class and see what you're seeing. But you are welcome to email me through my Saddleback account if that works better for you. And then there's just some other um, key policies that you might want to check out there when you have time. And then lastly, I list some resources here for you. Um, we have a very active food pantry, especially right now during the pandemic. So there's just some links for you to check out in case there's something that you might need. So I'm going to go back to the home page. I'm a big fan of repeating deadlines so that students aren't confused as to what's due. So you'll notice in your course, there's a to do page, or a, tab over here on the right. There's the course, uh, sorry, the calendar here on the left. This is populated with all of my assignments. Your assignments will pop up here in this to-do list. And then additionally, they're listed out here in this course calendar. So in this course calendar, you kind of have everything you need. If this doesn't work for you, everything you need is elsewhere too. But sometimes this will speak to some students. So I've kind of organized it by the week and then this column is the content that you're expected to learn. So it, each of these are clickable. They send you right to the module um, with the content that I want you to learn. And I'll show you what those look like in a bit. Then I have the homework deadlines that are associated with each of those weeks. So each week has a homework assignment and a discussion board. So then I have the discussion boards linked here along with the date that they're due. Everything has um, kind of midnight deadlines except for the exams. The exams are also on the same days that discussions are usually due. And they have a very short window of 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. I'll talk a little bit more about exams in just a minute. But you can see in this course calendar, everything is linked if that works for you. I do want to show you that the calendar that's within Canvas is up to date as well. So if I Go over to February, I just want to point out, this is the pattern of assignments that you'll see. You'll see Friday discussion, sorry, Friday homework deadlines and Monday discussion deadlines. So it may be strange, but I consider my week to be Tuesday through Monday instead of starting on Monday. And the reason that is, is because I wanted your tests to be on the very last day of the week. So if I considered Monday to be the first day of the week, then the very last day of the week would be Sunday because I want your test to be on the very last day. So you have all week to really get ready for it. But a lot of students aren't able to access computers or have babysitters or have to work. And so Sundays tend to not be a good day to have tests because there's a lot going on or a lot less resources available. So I have made my tests due Monday so that I know you have access um, to resources. So that means that my um, weeks now go from Tuesday to Monday. So you can see here our first exam is on the 22nd. So you will have a test on that Monday. And so the way that our course schedule kind of works is I start on a Tuesday. I deliver you content. I expect you to do a homework on Friday. And then after we've really mastered all this concept, then you'll follow up with the last day of the week on Monday and we'll discuss everything that we've learned. 
So this means that you should expect you'll have an assignment due every Monday and every Friday. There are a few Fridays you have off. You can see here there's nothing due on the 26th and that's just uh, a gift to you. But I would expect that every, every Monday and every Friday you pretty much have an assignment due. You can complete any of these early within the week. I do not open the content up early so that we can all stay on the same topic. Students who try to jet forward, especially in this class, tend to not master the material as well. So I try to keep everybody on the same topic and that requires then that you can't access some of the material from the, the following week, but you can complete the homework and the discussions earlier in the week. So now I'd like to go back to our main page so we can talk about those discussion boards and those um, homework. If I click on this homework link, I can get access to the homework. I also will see them represented in the modules and on this content page. Homework are due Fridays by midnight and I have them listed here by the exam material. So that means exam one will cover these topics, exam two will cover just these topics. So it kind of helps you organize your thought about homework. I do want to point out that my homework are all multiple choice questions and they're graded on a pass fail system. I do it this way so that students don't focus on just earning points, but they focus on learning the material. If you miss a question, but missing that question helped you learn the material more, I'm actually in favor of you kind of attempting it and working hard, but not fretting about points. So um, each of the homework are graded on this pass fail system. You have to get a 60% or above to pass. And then if you get the 60% or above, you get full credit for your homework. This is somewhat intimidating to some students because if they fail, then they get no points. But don't worry, I drop three homework so that it takes the pressure off. So if you miss a homework because something happened and you forgot to turn it in, or let's say you failed it because you didn't really understand the, the material that well, it's not gonna impact your grade greatly because each homework is worth very minimal amount of points and we drop three. Stop, stop, I'm gonna kick you out. When we look at the homework, I wanna show you what they look like. Canvas didn't really have a homework feature, so I used their quiz feature. So that's why it says take the quiz, but the quiz is really just a homework. But I wanna show you what it looks like. Um, Canvas didn't allow me to do pass fail. It wasn't a system that they had set up. So the way I've kind of gotten around the system is I make each of the questions that are the homework questions worth zero points. Then I go in and count how many you get right. And then I give the, the points to this question. So each homework is worth six points. So if you had passed this homework, you'd get six points on this question. If you failed the homework, you'd get zero. Because it's an open-ended question, Canvas recognizes that it can't grade it manually. And so it waits for me to grade it. This was my go around. But since I was doing an open-ended question anyway, I thought, hey, let me give them a chance to tell me how they're doing. So when you fill out this homework, there's this box here. You don't have to put anything there. You can tell me anything you want. You can tell me I had questions on that particular problem, uh, number three. I didn't understand this topic. Maybe you'd wanna tell me your computer isn't working. Or sometimes students say stuff like, I got a puppy, just wanna let you know. This is basically a private way each week you can touch base with me. And I read all of those comments. So um, feel free to let me know anything you want me to know. I will reply. If you ask a question, I will reply. And so when you go into the grade book and it see, shows you, like in this case, introduction homework, you can click to see my comment. Now, I, I do want to add, if you reply to my comment, 
Canvas doesn't alert me right away that that's happened. It sends me like an end of the week alert. So um, if it's something urgent, please email me so I know that, that you replied. So this is the way we do the homework then. Um, the multiple choice questions will give you immediate feedback as soon as you submit it so that you can understand what you may have gotten wrong. Um, none of my wrong answers are um, haphazardly chosen. They're all chosen based on common mistakes students make so that if you make that mistake, I can immediately say to you, mm, did you forget to do something? Because this is what happens when you don't do ABC. Um, and so that's why I think it's a good learning process because not only are you working to do it, but you're also um, given immediate feedback as to what you may have done wrong and then you can apply that knowledge to the exam. My homework questions aren't designed to be easy. They're not designed to just be practiced. They're designed to make you think, which means they cannot be completed in, you know, a few minutes before the deadline. They're designed for you to think about maybe for a few hours. So I would recommend opening up the homework at the beginning of the week, looking at the questions, and then you can come back to it later. So the, the homework is set up to where you can, um, I can show you here, you can make uh, selections and then let's say you're done for the day. So you just, um, sorry, I'm gonna just log out, go back to uh, the homepage. It says, are you sure you say yes? Now, if I go back to this particular homework, you'll see that my answers were saved for those two that I had done. And now I can continue working on the others. So you can open and close homework as frequently as you want. But once you hit the submit button, then the homework is mine to grade. So you can't submit more than once and expect that you can use the the subsequent submissions, but you can click on it, save it, open it, close it, open it, close it. There's no time limit. It is due on that Friday by midnight. And if you submit it late, I won't accept it. Um, but there really shouldn't be any problem. Uh, you have a really long window to do those. And typically the homework aren't a ton of questions. They're just thought provoking questions. So um, I don't want you to think you can breeze through them because there's only 10, but um, they are all multiple choice. So that does take the pressure off a bit. So have fun doing homework and see if they can help you with the learning process. Now, when talking about the discussion assignments due at the end of the week, you can access them this link through this link. You can access them through the calendar. You can access them through this panel or again, the modules link. I do want to point out that the discussions are a chance for us to explore and practice and talk. Some of the discussions are set up to where you cannot see other people's responses until you post your own response. And this is my desire to encourage you to give it a go before you see how everybody else did it. Not all of the discussions are set up that way. However, because I put it that way on purpose, I'm not okay with students posting a blank discussion post just so they can see everybody else's and then posting their response. That kind of defeats the purpose. I really want you to give it a go yourself. If you give it a go and you get it wrong, I'll give you four more, far more points than if you took a peek at everybody else's. So um, in that case then, if you post something that's blank and um, then post again subsequently, I won't grade the again post. I will only grade the post that you posted first. So keep that in mind. I'm not trying to be mean, I'm trying to get you to think. And by doing the work yourself, I'm getting you to think. And you'll notice down here, this has something called program guides. We're going to learn how to use something called JASP and it's free software and it's statistical and it will do a lot of the hard crunching of numbers that we need to do later. You'll still learn the theory of why it works and how it works, but we're going to make the stats program do a lot of the, the heavy lifting. And sometimes students get a little tripped up on um, loading the program or getting data in. And so within each module, I have videos on how to do that, but sometimes you just need a quick reference. So this link here will lead you to guides for how to work with JASP in case you're just looking for something in particular. Now I'd like to talk to you about how the lessons are provided to you. And this is kind of the most critical part of the course. So again, you can access lessons through this lessons link through the course calendar link, or through the modules. 
I'm going to click on the first content that we have for the course. Each module is going to look like this. There's kind of three panels on the page. The panels on the left is this is kind of your study guide or to-do list. These are the things you need to master before you're done with this week. If these goals or these topics don't feel solid to you, then don't leave the week until they do. Then we have the content delivery. And then on the right, we have the assignments. So typically this isn't as long. It's just because it's the first week we have lots of things listed. So I have this icebreaker. You can introduce yourself. I have a practice Proctorio exam. If you've never used Proctorio and you're nervous about how that will work for the exams, this is where you will um, click on it to give it a practice run. And then this is typically what you would see on the assignments page. I will list the reading that is required of you. Sometimes I'll say all of chapter something or other, and sometimes I only want you to know a certain piece. Like you'll see here in chapter four, you can skip the SPSS lesson for that particular chapter. And then you'll see linked to homeworks here as well. So if this page speaks to you, everything you need for the week will be in this page. So you find the technique that works best for you. The lessons are in the middle here. You'll see at the top of the page, I describe how long the lesson videos are. And they're typically about an hour and 10 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes. Um, each week varies. Um, that'll help you plan a little bit of how much time you want to set aside. But please note that I have heard from students that sometimes they have to watch a video and maybe rewatch it or pause it, kind of back up a bit. So it may not be exactly an hour and eight minutes for you. It may take you less time or more time, depending on what you end up doing. Um, my daughter loves to learn watching YouTube videos in faster speed. I don't know how she does it, but she says it works for her. So if you end up watching videos in, in faster speed, then of course this will take less time for you. But more than likely what I'm suspecting will happen is that this is the length of the videos you have to watch and you will spend more time on them as you pause and write your notes and think about what was said or maybe rewatch a portion. Along with each of the week's um, at the very top, you'll see any documents that you'll need for the week. For this particular week, I actually, for every week, I will provide the notes. And so this is a PDF of blank notes that um, use the images that are found in the lecture, and then you can write in. So on this first particular week, I don't really have a lot of content um, that's blank, but sometimes I might say something where um, I have the answer is, and then I put a big blank here. And then on my slide, I say it's the answer is 25, but on the PowerPoint, sorry, on the PDF, it's blank. And that's because I want you to watch the video and not just try to glean it from the PDF. You can see from the PDF, it, it is pithy with its information because I'm busy teaching it on the video. Um, I think, for example, this is a slide, I spend a long time talking about this, but if you were just to look at this picture, you probably wouldn't know. Um, what the answers were. So I leave a big blank spot at the bottom so that you can write out your notes. If you can print that and write on it during the test, I find that students say that works for them because our tests are open note. So the more organized you are going in, the better it will be. However, you're not at a total penalty if you can't print it. Just make sure your notes are organized and you have a way of understanding what it was we were learning in that lecture. Then within each um, module, I have the videos. Now these first few videos, because I first started getting started with making videos, they're a little longer, but as the course went on, I started making shorter videos. Most of them are five minutes and that kind of thing. But um, you can watch the video right here in the module by clicking play, or you can click on the link and watch it on your own devices or something. Um, and then each of these videos are represented in this PDF note. So as you scroll down, you'll see there'll be multiple videos. Some weeks will have many videos. Some weeks will have fewer videos. It all varies from topic to topic. And then as we scroll down, you'll notice at the end here, I have non-required videos. So each week will have additional material I found elsewhere to help really explore the topic. If you feel like you just didn't quite get it and you need more, there will be other videos there. So this is how each week will be presented to you. And you have everything you need on this page, but you can also navigate through the modules to get to this content as well.
The last piece I really want to discuss with you is um, the exam. So I use Proctorio to um, manage exam taking. It's very important to me that the student who is in the class is the student who's taking the test and that they're not trying to bypass um, anything by, with cheating. So that's why I use Proctorio. It is a, um, uh, a deal breaker for many students and I understand that they don't necessarily like that. I'm not bending on the Proctorio uh, requirement. So if that is something that doesn't work for you, then I would consider, I would encourage you to consider a different class. If you're not sure if Proctorio is going to work for you, I have a practice exam. It's set up just like the normal Proctorio exams are for the other exams. All the settings are exactly the same and it's an opportunity for you to practice and you can practice as many times as you want in there. I give you five points for doing it because I want to encourage you to go in there and see what it's like. Um, but if you're not sure, you can do this at any point and I encourage you to do it before the drop deadline so you can see if this is going to be a make or break deal for you. So these are the general policies of my exam. They're open from three to 10. That's a very strict window. I won't be bending on that. So they're available on the Mondays that they're due from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. You'll have 75 minutes to take the test. And um, unfortunately, it, it stops allowing you to take the test at 10 p.m. So if you started it at 9.50, then you only have 10 minutes to take it. It's just kind of the way the system's set up. Um, if you have questions about it, please let me know. Um, the, tw the questions are not only multiple choice or only open-ended. They're really a mishmash of different kinds of questions. Some are valued more, some questions are more valued more heavily than others. So they might be worth 10 points or 15 points where other questions are worth two or three. So I do encourage students to take a look at those values. If questions are weighted heavily, I do put them at the top of the exam. So I make sure that you've allowed yourself enough time to take that, uh, to fill out that question. Um, it does show you all the questions at once. So there is that benefit of you being able to scroll through, but I would encourage you to resist the desire to do the easy ones first because you may run out of time and the easy ones are worth far less points. So it's kind of a, a detriment to your grade to get those knocked out first. The best thing you could do is do the harder questions first, get those mega points loaded, and then do the easy questions as you're crunching down on time. So um, the, the, the general rules are you can't use a cell phone or another device. It's 75 minutes. You'll need to show some kind of ID, a passport, um, school ID, driver's license. Those things work. Um, you're not allowed to browse the web or anything. You can use your calculator. You can use your notes, but you can't collaborate with anybody else. Two last pieces I want to point out are down here at the bottom of the page. We have something called a claim critique and at this particular point in time you do not have nearly enough knowledge to know how to do that. I sometimes have students who want to jump ahead but you really wouldn't have the resources you need to answer this kind of assignment. So I will reference it in the future but essentially what we're trying to do is have you evaluate a product that you're interested in using the knowledge we've learned in the class. So as we get closer to this claim critique, which is due at the very end of class, I will bring it up and talk to you more about it. But I didn't want you to try to look at it and, and guess. Sometimes I have students who in the first week go, what kind of product should I use? And I'm thinking, just wait. <laughs> Let's see if we can learn some material first before I ask you to the, apply it. And then um, th you'll see I have an extra credit link here. I'm a big fan of extra credit. When it was pre-COVID days, I really wanted to encourage you to come to campus because I think there are phenomenal opportunities to expand your mind and your experiences. But now that we're in COVID, uh, Saddleback College is still offering a bunch of experiences, but they're all kind of online. So you'll find those of, uh, listed here. I update this list every Monday. So if there's something there that doesn't really speak to you, check in next the next week. Um, they are all due. I won't be accepting extra credit after um, the exam, the last exam. So you may want to just preload, right? Get those points done earlier in the semester so you're not scrambling to find events and find out there aren't any more offered or something. In terms of late assignments, I don't accept any late homework at all. It's really important to me that you get those done by those deadlines. I will accept late discussions and late claim critiques when we get there um, with a 10% penalty. The 10% isn't too bad, so it's worth doing the discussion versus skipping it all together. But if you have a low grade for maybe you didn't do it right or you had a 10% penalty, don't worry. I do, dis I do drop one discussion board, the lowest discussion board grade, and three 
of the lowest homework grades. So there's definitely opportunity for you to mess up, but then recover and not have it impact your grade. So just keep that in mind that timing of assignments is important to me. However, life happens. And if you have to be late on a discussion, that's okay. I would still like you to go in there and give it a go. And then, you know, it's just a little bit of penalty each day that it's late. Um, but then there's the opportunity to make that grade up later with extra credit assignments or um, having it count towards one of your dropped assignments.